Hey everyone, it's Javi here and this is the second video of my new series that is all about how to use Next.js to build a very simple blog website. In this video, we're gonna learn how to add an image to our website. We're going to customize the metadata of our pages. We're gonna learn how to use CSS modules to add styles to our components. And then lastly, we are going to be applying global styles across all of our pages. In my last video, we set up the dev environment, we created and ran our Next.js app for the first time, and we learned how to create and link pages. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Javi, and I make weekly videos about product design skills, principles, and practices to help you build digital products and bring your ideas to life. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, don't forget to hit subscribe. So let's get started. If you recall from our last video, what we did is we created a Next.js app in our desktop and the way that we could open that up in VS Code in our code editor was simply by dragging that folder just as it was last time and drop it here into VS Code. And then you will see that it loads right up with all of your files ready for editing. And if you want to open this up in your development server to see a live preview as we are editing these files, then all you have to do is come over here to your terminal and just make sure that you are in the right directory. So we are just gonna go to desktop and then to our Next.js blog, and then I can do npm run dev, and that should give you a local host that I can then copy and paste into our browser. And if I go ahead and do that now, you will see something like this based on what we did last time. If you'll recall, we had this editing that we did on the, the heading here. And then this page was directing us to the first post that we created in that video. Now, the first thing that we wanted to go over in this video is how to add an image to our website. The way to do that is coming here to your VS code and we are going to be creating a folder that is going to contain all the images that we want for our blog. And that is going to live as a folder in our public directory here. So if I have this selected and I click on the new folder button, then you can see that I can just set this up and we're gonna call it images. If we now head over to the folder itself, you can see that if I come over here to public, then this images folder is gonna live right there as we specified. Now I have my profile image ready to go here and I call it profile.png, which is the name that we will reference later in the code. All I have to do to add it is drag the image over to our images folder. I can close this and then if you look at the VS code, you will see that our profile image is right here as well. One thing to note about images and Next.js is that whenever we wanna reference an image in our website, we can use the Next.js image component, which is going to take care out of the box for image optimization aspects like resizing and lazy loading. Lazy loading means that your image is only going to be loaded once the user scrolls it into view. So if you have many images on a single page, they don't have to load all at the same time. Don't worry about knowing how to use this component just yet. We're gonna get back to it after we work on our styles first. The next thing that we wanted to figure out in this video is how to customize the metadata of our pages. Metadata are simply keywords and phrases that describe what your page is about. It's also the information that search engines like Google use to help people find your pages. To add metadata to this page, the first thing that we have to do is import a component called head from Next.js. And the way we can do that is come over here to our top section here of the code in firstpost.js and we can do a new import and we're gonna reference here head from next slash head. And now as we import this, we can use the head component across our code for this page. Now the way to reference the head component inside our post is simply by coming here to our return inside the first post function and I'm gonna simply add a head component that is gonna come right before our heading one. And inside that head component, I'm gonna have a title that is gonna be called first post. So if I hit save for this with command S on VS Code, I can now come here to my local host 
And now if I click on this reference here to our first post, you will see that in your browser in the tab, the metadata title is going to appear in this case, first post. And now that we have our metadata in place, we can move on to the next part of this video, which I know a lot of designers watching this have been waiting for this moment, and that is styling. You will notice that if you go back to our index page, this actually already has some styles. And that is because Next.js has built-in support for a library called StyleJSX, which is a CSS and JS library that helps you introduce styles directly in your React components. If we come over here to our code and look at index.js, you will see that if you scroll down, actually the styles are gonna be here in this container called style.jsx, and that is where these styles are coming from. Next.js also has built-in support for CSS and SAS, which means that you can import both .css and .scss files in your code. This is worth mentioning because it's exactly what we're going to do right now to style our components with CSS modules. Now, what we are going to do next is come over here to our application and as a top level directory, we're going to create a folder that is going to be called components. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is where our components and CSS modules for the styling are going to live. So this is it. And now inside this folder, we can create a file called layout.js, which is going to be a component that we are going to be using across our pages. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna click on this new file button and call this layout.js. So that should be it. And now in order to get this component started, we can come over to the learning documentation and I'm just gonna grab this simple code snippet just to get the component initialized. So if we are looking at this briefly, basically what we can see is this is a functional component that is passing an object as props and that is then getting referenced in the diff wrapper right here. So a simple definition, I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And now if we want to use this component in our first post page, all we have to do is import it here in our first post.js here at the very top. So we can do that by declaring an import. And here we can simply do the appropriate directory path. So if we are looking here on the side, we can see that we have to do two steps down. So dot, dot, slash, and then again, a dot, dot. And now here you can see that we have the components folder that we can reference. And inside that components folder, we can call layout. So that is how we import the layout component inside first post. And now that we have that there, we can go ahead and fill in these angle brackets here, which were left here purposefully for us to reference this component. So we have to do it both at the beginning and in the end. So we hit save for that. And now if we were to go back to our localhost right here to our development server. And if I were to go to that page, you can see that nothing really changed. And that is because we have connected the component to that page, but we still haven't defined any styles for it. So that is where the CSS modules are gonna come into play. There's a couple things that we have to do in order to set up that CSS module. First of all, let's declare it. So I'm gonna come back here to the components folder that we just defined and we can go ahead and create a new file that we're gonna call layout.module.css. So that is where we are going to be putting our styles. And I can just briefly come here to the learn documentation to grab the snippet that was made ready for us. And this is simply a reference to a container styling that contains some max width, as you can see, some padding and some margin. So now that we have our styles in place, let's go ahead and connect that over to our layout component. The first thing that we can do is come back here to our layout.js and let's declare an import. So we can import this with whatever name we want. We can just go ahead and call it styles. And then we can do a simple uh, path declaration here. So because we are in the same folder, we can just do dot and then slash layout.module.css, 
which is the name of the file we just created. So we have that in place now. And now that we've done our import, we can go ahead and reference that within the code of our component. And in the case of the CSS module, we have to pass that as a class name of whatever wrapper or div it is that we want those styles to be affecting. So we can come here to the div in this case, and I'm just simply gonna type class name equals, and then within the squiggly brackets, I can reference styles, which is the name of the import that we did here, and then dot container. And this dot container, what it's doing, it's referencing the dot container section here within our CSS module. So if I go ahead and hit save, and I come back here to my development server, you can see that we've now applied those styles to our component. Now, CSS modules are helpful when it comes to defining styles at the component level. But if we want to have some styles that are going to be defined across all of our pages, we need to go into the territory of global CSS styles. The first thing that we have to do to load global CSS in our application is come over here to the pages folder and we're gonna create a file here that is gonna be called underscore app.js. For the code of this particular component, we have a code snippet here in the learn documentation. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. So let's drag that over to the component itself. I'm gonna hit save. And as mentioned in the documentation, this is a very special component because it is going to be the one that is common across all of our different pages. And that is why this is the only way in Next.js where we can actually pass global CSS, that is by importing it into this file right here. Before we continue, let's actually take a moment to come back to our terminal here because one thing that we have to do when we add this underscore app.js file is restart our development server. So the way you can do that is doing control C on the terminal and now that should be restarted. Now I can go ahead and run it again by doing npm run dev and this should successfully restart the server. Now that we have the app component in place inside our pages folder, we can go ahead and create our global styles. So to do that, we're gonna come here to our application. We're gonna create a new folder that is going to be called styles. And inside this folder, we can create a new file. We can call it global.css. And inside this file, I just grabbed the code snippet from the learn documentation, which contains a series of CSS code. So I'm gonna just copy paste that in and I'm gonna hit save. And as mentioned, now we can go ahead and import those global styles into our app.js file. So we can come up here and declare an import. In this case, we can simply do import and then dot dot to go back one directory. Now you could see here the styles folder. And within that, what we wanna reference is global.css. So that is our global styles. I'm gonna hit save on everything. And now, if I were to come back here to first post, you can see that it's automatically doing the fast refresh and it's giving us the styles that we just defined. Before we call it a day, let's go ahead and polish our app with a couple of more code snippets from the learn documentation. So. If we follow those, I can just go ahead and copy paste this. This is going to be for our layout CSS module. As you can see, it's just going to be a couple more stylings here that we're gonna be applying once we update our page. So let's go ahead and copy paste this into our layout module. So I'm gonna remove this bit right here and I'm gonna hit save on these new styles. So that is gonna be number one. The second is we can go ahead and create a set of utility CSS classes that are going to be useful for us across multiple components. And in this case, what is being referenced here is some typography stylings that we're gonna be using across our application. So for that, let's go ahead and come here to our styles folder and we can create a file called utils and then dot module dot CSS. So just created that and I'm gonna be copy pasting those values here. 
So there we have them. And then the third polish that we can apply is related to our layout component. So as you can see, we have the code here. It's essentially going to be an update related to the imports. If we will compare that to what we currently have right now, we're just going to be importing everything that we just created. You can see here that we are importing the image component that we talked about earlier. So that is being referenced, let's see, right over here in our header. You see that there is the image component that's being referenced and here will be the name of the file that you have uploaded. So in my case, that will be profile.png. And it's also referencing that we can go ahead and set up uh, in this particular line of code right here, we can put our name. So go ahead and put your name for, for that piece right there. So I've already copied the code. I'm gonna go ahead and come to my layout component. I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna do command V for the code. And just to tweak this a little bit, I'm gonna change this to my own name and then I'm gonna make sure that in the image section here inside our image component, I'm gonna be referencing the right file name. So that is gonna be related to the one that we uploaded earlier here inside our, our public folder. That is gonna be everything regarding our layout component. And then finally, we can go ahead and update our homepage. So our homepage is currently our index.js, right? So if we go back to that, we can see that we have pretty irrelevant information going on regarding the fact that we wanna have our blog here. So let's go ahead and remove all this stuff, including all of these JSX styles. I'm gonna remove all of that and I'm gonna paste this here. And as you can see, essentially what this is, is it's going to be importing our layout component, it's going to import the site title, which we just defined to be our name. And it's also importing some of those uh, utility styles that we defined. So you will have your site title, and then here you're gonna have the layout all together that you have created. So here you can put a self introduction. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop something here just so we can see it. So product designer, that makes YouTube videos. That sounds about right. And I can just, I'm gonna remove this P tag here because that is just another text reference. And now that we have everything in place, we can go ahead and have a look at our development server and see how things look. So there you go, as expected, we have our image component right here. I had to actually make a small adjustment because in between recording these videos, I had forgotten to adjust my directories here. We need this images directory in between for the path to be appropriate and inside we have the file. So we have that in place. We have the site title that in this case is our name, which we defined just a few minutes ago. And right below it is this description that we just typed here. That is all for today. In this video, what we did in summary is we added an image to our website. We defined the metadata of our pages and we also applied some styles both globally using the app component as well as to specific components using CSS modules. In the next video, we're gonna be learning about Next.js's pre-rendering feature, and we're gonna learn how to pass blog data to our website through a pre-rendering method called static generation. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and let me know below if there are any questions or comments that you may have regarding anything that we covered today. I hope you're well and stay safe and I will catch you in the next one.